Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. My name is Nicholas. I'm the minister here, and it's lovely to have you with us. And I'd like to welcome all of you who are watching online. Uh, we live stream the service. It's lovely to have you with us. Okay, so who's here for the John Denver weekend? Please put your hands up. Welcome, guys. It's lovely to have you with us again. Absolutely fantastic. We so appreciate you coming. And were you here? There's the concert last night, I think. Who was at the concert last night? Yes, most of you. And we've got one to do. Yeah, you were, Mac, I know. It... <laughs> and we've got Mac and Ellen here today who are going to be playing for a special uh, John Denver song. So, so appreciate that. And Mac, today you're doing a concert here at four o'clock this afternoon, aren't you? With Chris, S- Chris with Chris Noel and Chris Bannister. So we're delighted uh, to have you guys with us. And, you know, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you every year. We're always aware of you being here and look forward to arriving. So thank you so much uh, for that. Um, I've just got a few uh, announcements I'm going to read out, just a a few things that that are coming up. Um, This week, we've got a a big mailing we're sending out. So if anybody's able to help in the office uh, doing stuff, please, if you could contact Heather MacDonald. She's looking uh, for help with that. Um, Just going through the week, uh, we have meditation tomorrow morning and then just going through it particularly looking at at Wednesday between five and seven o'clock we've got a new show opening downstairs uh, the Four Rivers Biennial uh, Jury Show Uh, that means the show that's downstairs at the moment the Aces show it's the last week that show's there so if you see anything you've been thinking of buying now is the time to buy it because it'll be gone next week Um, But at the Four Rivers Biennial, there's a good opening at five o'clock on Wednesday. Lots of good food and drink there. Uh, But also, you're able to vote for the People's Choice Award. It sounds like a TV show. The People's Choice Award, uh, voting between five and six o'clock. And the the, um, award will be announced at 6.30. So you can actually go in and vote for whichever work of art of the new show that you like. And then um, do that. Um, and vote uh, there. And then, um, just coming up next week, um, next week we're doing a, a, a different thing after the service. Michael, do you want to come up? I'm going to be doing a, a little pilot for a TV show. Uh, we're calling it I from Aspen, and myself and Michael Sandry are doing it together. It's a half-hour show, and it starts at 11 o'clock here in the chapel. Um, and now it's going to be just looking at, what are we looking at in the first show? We're going to be looking at, at fear and what it takes to overcome fear because there seems to be a lot of fear if you watch the news, if you follow anything <laughs> these days. It's hard not to have your belly twisted into a knot. And so we're going to talk about fear and practical ways that we can overcome it. We're going to do that in the first part. And then we're going to take your questions so you can be thinking about it this week. What is the fear in your life? And bring your fear in next Sunday. And so we can talk about ways that we can move through it we can lean into it and we can come out the other side as you see michael's a natural this is sort of thing i'm the sort of contributor really he's going to be the host we we have one of the top self-help shows self-help and spiritual shows in the world on itunes on youtube on everything and so i've had over a thousand guests on the show and we're going to bring in some of the top tips and tools to help you to overcome fear next sunday good so obviously i'm doing this now because we're looking to have a studio audience so it's just not the two of us together Uh, When you go downstairs, uh, there's a table that's laid out there, and on there there's a flip chart. If you'd like to be part of the studio audience, uh, during the reception, just sign up on the flip chart, and and then we know the names of the people who are going to be here for the studio audience at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Michael, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate that. That's great. Um, So that's happening next week. And just to look look at the things that are going on, we, we have our traditional gift day, Uh, which is really an opportunity for people to give to the chapel above and beyond their normal giving. Maybe you sold a house or a business has done well or whatever it is, you know. That's the day for gift day. It's sort of uh, an acknowledgement of bounty. And we're going to have that on the 27th. And then on the, on the um, 3rd of November, some of you know, we built a cairn in the garden. You can see it on your way out. And in there, we're going to be placing a time capsule. And in the time capsule, we're going to put lots of things in the capsule that we hope people in 2069 will be interested in reading about. Um, Now, there's an opportunity for you to be in the time capsule. Um, 
If you go downstairs, there's a time capsule table uh, and you can pick up one of these um, cards and put whatever you like on it. Could be your name, details of you, advice for the future, fears for now, whatever you like. Uh, there's some guidelines for the capsule if you want to have a look at that. And then um, we're going to take all of those things. There's some prayer ribbons where you can sign a prayer for the future there as well. All that with a lot of other stuff is going to be put inside the time capsule. And we're going to seal that on the, the 3rd of November. So um, that's quite exciting. Uh, we want the entries by the Monday the 28th, if you want to put something in that time capsule. And then on Sunday the 10th, we're having a Thanksgiving potluck after the service um, downstairs. One final thing, I'm going to be doing uh, the Living the Life Force course in Carbondale. Um, I'm going to be doing it for four weeks, starting Thursday, October the 24th. Uh, that's from 6 to 7.30, um, which is based on my new book, which you can buy downstairs. Um, and that's uh, Thursday the 24th, 6 to 7.30 in Carbondale, the Third Street Centre, if you'd like to, um, to come along to that. So we're just going to take a moment, I'd just like to take a moment at the beginning of a service, just to centre ourselves. It's always such a busyness coming in. And just to realise that we're here, really to open our hearts to that divine spirit. So let's make the intention to be present to be open to being touched by John Denver's songs that we hear sung, anything we hear from the front, anything we see, that we can be moved in a little way. Amen. So, Macanellen. Lost and alone on some forgotten highway Traveled by many, remembered by few Looking for something that I can believe in Looking for something that I'd like to do with my life there's nothing behind me and nothing that ties me to something that might have been true yesterday. Tomorrow is open. Right now it seems to be more than enough to just be here today. Sing along. something that I can believe in, looking for something I'd like to do with my life. There's nothing behind me and nothing that ties me to something that might have been true yesterday. Tomorrow is over. Right
right now it seems to be more than enough to just be here today i don't know what the future is holding in store i don't know There's a spirit that guides me, a light that shines over me. My life is worth the living, I don't need to see the end. Sweet, sweet surrender, live, live without care, like a fish in the water. Lovely. So we're going to let our children go now. If you'd like to go down and play downstairs, if you prefer to do that rather than listening to me, you can do that as well if you're older. But uh, please do go, go down with Heather and Jessica. It's lovely to have you with us. My daughter's now doing Sunday school. Would you believe she was this big when she arrived? <laughs> lovely. So anyway, let's just, um, let's just take a moment. And just uh, maybe with our eyes closed, just get a sense of what's been going on for us in our life this week. It was good to take a bit of an audit and look at how we feel about ourselves, what's been happening to us, what we've been looking forward to. Maybe what we've been dreading. Be aware of our concerns. Concerns for our families, friends, the country. Also things we're grateful for. Beauty of the outside friends and family. Also being aware of what we've brought into this space, the thoughts that we've brought with us. Just noticing how often we live in our heads, live in our minds. And let's just let go of those thoughts now. And just drop down into our hearts, drop down into our breath. And just notice our breath and just deepening it a little. Having attention on our breath. In our hearts, in that place where We connect with the divine. Let's just open our hearts to that connection that's given us love, given us our lives. Gives us that peace that passes all understanding. When our attention's on our breath and our hearts, then we're not troubled by our minds. Let's open our hearts to each other as a small community here as we come together. Open to the love from each other. Open to giving that love. O love divine to whom all hearts are open. 
all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, come and cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ. Amen. Tell it to me, say it again This long time of waiting is coming to an end Well, I never gave up, now I'm giving in To the comfort of your open skies No blame for where I've been Too many years I have wandered Too many things I thought I had to do I've been a long while in exile Now I'm coming back to you Last night alone in a cabin of I stared at the Milky Way Splashed across the sky And I thought I was lost As the wind chilled my bones The freedom of my emptiness The only thing I owned Too many years I Too many things I thought I had to do I've been a long while in exile Now I'm coming back to you Then a great shooting star fell from the sky The light from its passing was a flame a thousand miles high It showed me the road I'd been on so long it Showed me everything I love and gave me back a song I have wondered Too many things I thought I had to do I've been a long while In exile Now I'm coming back to you I've been a long while In exile It's called Love After Love by Derek Wolcott. The time will come when with elation 
you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you have ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. So our theme for our service today is, is the joy of surrender. I just want to point out Shelley's flowers. This is the joy of surrendering to fall, which I think is absolutely lovely and beautifully uh, done again. Thank you very much, Shelley. I so appreciate uh, the flowers. Now, I don't know what your idea of retirement is. I think for me, it's about uh, being by the ocean, sitting in the sun, Drinking tequilas and watching television. <laughs> that is an awful thing to admit. So I think I must go around and interview those of you who have retired, and there are a few here, and find out, you know, what you all thought was li- that life was going to be when you did retire. And I suspect many of you are still looking for retirement from retirement. Um, and then... We are in, you know, once we've gone retired from retired, then we're in a care home after that. And this is all the good news here. <laughs> and of course, after the care home, then you die. And you're finally free. There is a part of us that always wants it all to end. There's a part of us that wants it all to end. Like, You know, those of you that do meditation, like wanting meditation to end. You know, like wanting all this efforting to be good. All this efforting to do the right thing. To be conscious. To carry on. You know, we want all that to end. Having to to effort it all in our lives. And do you know what the awful truth is? The awful truth is that there is no end to it. But when you you actually get that, that there's no end to it, what you face every day, when you get that, then you're free. You know, we're continually trying to do better. You know, we try to get our meditation better, to live better, to compost, you know, to be successful. We try to live life more skillfully. Alan Watts famously said that self-improvement is a dangerous form of vanity. And I think that's so interesting. I know what he means. I love that image someone once told me about, uh, that image uh, about heaven. And the gates of heaven are there. And there's a sign above the gates of heaven that says, self-improvement ends here. I mean, Alan Watts, Alan Watts also said that uh, self-improvement was the human equivalent of a dog chasing its tail. <laughs> and that idea that we are endlessly trying to get better. You know, we buy books. You know, you go down to explore books on self-improvement. I'm afraid mine will be there as well. But there are books all over the place on self-improvement. And the idea that we have to get somewhere in our lives, I think, is completely uh, exhausting. You know, I have it myself. I find, I feel an ennui about the continual process of carrying on with it all. I feel a sort of, you know, desperateness for it to stop on one level. All of it, what it takes. And, you know, there is just a huge temptation just to give up, to give up trying or whatever, to give up meditating, you know, to give up being good, to give up trying to make things be successful. 
And as you go through life, you try this and you try that. You know, you do this course and you do that course. You pick and choose and try to find your way. But you get to a certain point where you realize that actually none of it's going to make a difference. And actually, that sense of trying itself is never going to end. And if you get to that moment, you have the chance of getting out from underneath of that pressure, of realizing that this is the way it's always going to be, that you are you're in this to the end. And at that moment, you can get out from behind the pressure, and that's what we're talking about today, and surrender to that, to surrender to that pressure. People spend their whole lives trying to get that pressure to end. You know, they try and get tons of money because they think then it will end. You know, they try and keep their health because then the pressure will end. And in the end, it's only at the moment of death that they finally see it fall away. That's when it finishes, which is such a waste of life. You know, we waste our lives trying to get it to end, this, this, the pressure, to spend our whole life trying to let go, and then only to let go ugh, just before you die. Far better to let go now and enjoy the rest of your life, to realise really that you're in it to the death. Whatever it is you're going through, you're in it to the death. And by doing so, if you can let go of that, you get out from under it. It's as if all the, in life we're trying to push a ball up the hill the whole time. And suddenly you realize that you can just get out of the way and push the ball downhill and it's a lot easier than trying to push it uphill. We're, we're all in this to the death. So we might as well get used to it whatever it is, and try to enjoy it. And that's what it means, I think, to surrender to life. In the Gospel of Thomas, it begins, I who write this am Thomas, the double, the twin. Jesus, the living master, spoke, and his secret sayings I've written down. I assure you, whoever grasps their meaning will not know the taste of death. And actually, what we're fighting all the time in our life is that death. We're fighting that death. The, the death of failure. The death of our health. The death of justice. The death of the planet. The death of our personal success. The death of our family. The death of our youth. The death of what we want to happen in our lives. We're always fighting one death or another. And to surrender to life is to give up and die to it now. Which means you don't have to taste death ever again. By fundamentally and radically giving up, that's what it means. You arrive at a point where you've given up to a point where you're actually behind whatever's happening. Whatever's happening or going on, you're with it. And even at that moment of death, if you've fully given up to it, and I notice, you know, in my meditation practice, I bring that concept of death into that practice. So that when you get to that point of death, if you're able to do that, just to be with that as well, you're actually riding that moment if you are able to give up to it. It's back to that timelessness that we were talking about last week, to surrender to life really is to stop trying. Eckhart, Meister Eckhart, the, the uh, 13th century mystic, says, to cling to time is to refuse to be vulnerable to timelessness, to depth, to awe, to the suspension of time in the ecstasy of being, which is where we learn that eternal life has begun. And, and to give up is to really go into something that is timeless, because you're not looking forward anymore. You're actually just giving up to that moment. We have to be completely vulnerable to life and to realize, yes, this isn't going to end. We're all in this to the death. And that seems, when you think of it, like not a moment's peace, because it's just going to be the same. 
But in reality, to give up to life is to finally experience the peace of not trying. And then when you don't try, you suddenly have compassion for your life and for all that comes with it. You sort of get behind your life and you have compassion for what's going on. Compassio means passio to suffer, come with. To suffer with your life. To surrender and open ourselves to suffering with our lives rather than to fight them. And that brings it, with it, a peace that we all seek. You know, that's what it means, the peace that passes all understanding. That peace is the connection with the divine. It's the cooperation with the friendly universe. And then if you stay with that, if you can stay with that peace of having given up, something else will come through. And what comes through is joy. Joy comes from that peace. There's a famous line in the Bible, which I always think is is very interesting. It says, Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. And that is being fully at peace with your life. And in being fully at peace, joy can come through. You know, in my life, the one thing I always wanted was peace. I think it comes from having a dysfunctional youth. Uh, There was a lot of pain and difficulty that I went through that I tried to self-medicate myself out of. But I noticed, you know, the one thing I always wanted was, was that experience of being at peace. And then about 20 years ago, I actually did finally find that sense of peace. Um, I remember being told off in the church, I'd done something wrong, and the powers that be got me in in the Church of England, and they said, uh, uh, the person that was t- telling me off said, you, you know, the trouble with you is that you're contented. I liked that. I liked, I liked this accusation. I, th- I think we have to arrive at that experience of peace. And there is something in surrender to that experience of peace. Now, I'm just going to do an experiment here. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. So, so th- I'm going to ask you to close your eyes so you don't have to see or nobody can see who's doing this. But I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and put your hands up if you feel that you're at peace with your life, if you can feel that peace. So everyone close their eyes, no one look. Okay, now put your hand right up if you feel at peace with your life. Okay, put your hands down. They can open your eyes. Quite a few people, I have to say. Quite a few people. It is a foundational point to get to. And that giving up, the striving for wanting the outcome to one way or another, you know, is... A, is, is is a moment arriving at that sense of peace. Peace is something that comes with surrender. In fact, the word surrender comes from sir, which means over, and render, which means to give. So really, surrender is to give over. That's what it actually means, to give over. So in reality, it means we're giving ourselves back to life. That wonderful poem that Jane read so beautifully of Derek Walcott, Love After Love. Time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door when you give up to your life. You greet, suddenly you've arrived. You greet yourself arriving at your own door and in your own mirror. And each will smile at the other's welcome at that moment of surrender. And say, sit, stay, eat. You will love again the stranger, in other words, your life, who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger, your life, who has loved you all your life, whom you have ignored for another, your ideas of what life could be, who knows you by heart, your life. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, Peel your own image from the mirror and sit. Feast on your life. That's what he's talking about. Giving up to that life. And to surrender in this way is to give yourself back to life. And the result of this is what Derek Walcott says is elation. 
He says, time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving. Elation, you are raised up, raised up like on the cross. And we experience joy at that being raised up. Joy is the result of that surrender. And joy follows on from peace if you let it. Oswald Chambers said, happiness depends on what happens. Joy does not. Happiness depends on what happens. Joy does not. Real joy comes from being at peace with your life so you can rest in love. It is a falling into the depths of life, into the deep connectivity of all things. The Buddhist Dhammapada says this, of living in joy, and that's really what we're talking about, of of surrendering to living in joy. The Dhammapada says, live in joy, in love, even among those who hate. Live in joy, in health, even among the afflicted. Live in joy, in peace, even among the troubled. Live in joy without possessions like the shining ones. The winner sows hatred because the loser suffers. Let go of winning and losing and find joy. There is no fire like passion, no crime like hatred, no sorrow like separation, no sickness like hunger, no joy like the joy of freedom, health, contentment and trust, Health, contempt, and trust are your greatest possessions, and freedom is your greatest joy. Look within, be still, free from fear and attachment. This is, this is what it is to surrender. Know the sweet joy of the way. How joyful to look upon the awakened and to keep company with the wise. How long the road to the man who travels with a fool. It's lovely that, isn't it? How long when you're traveling? How long the road to the man who travels with the food? But hopeful, but whosoever follows those who follow the way discovers his family and is filled with joy. Follow then the shining ones, the wise, the awakened, the loving, for they know how to work and forbear. Follow them as the moon follows the path of the stars. Joy is a sure sign that we're on the way, that we're on the right path. And it comes as a result of surrender, that giving ourselves back to life. As life comes to us with a seemingly, life comes to us with a seemingly cold embrace. The temptation is to run from it, to put it off, to try to duck out, to retire from life, to retire from relationships, from the spiritual life, to retire from the moment. We want to put off that cold embrace because it feels like death. But we only do that so that we can die another day. We only do that so that we can die another day, which is actually the title of the next James Bond film, Die Another Day. So just to <laughs> put popular culture into my sermons, that's what it's supposed to be. We only do that so that we can die another day. We put off that embrace so we can die tomorrow and not today. But in doing that, we put off life and end up only dying at our deaths. By taking that embrace, we don't find it cold at all. We take it, and in dying to the moment, rather than trying to put it off, we find the peace of surrender, and we give ourselves back to our lives. And the result of that is a joy that comes from the deepest part of ourselves. And we literally rejoice at the finding of ourselves again. We rejoice. As Shakespeare said, what's done's done. The joy is in the doing. What's done's done. The joy is in the doing. It's not about what happens. It's about how we meet what happens. Giving up to this moment. The boredom, the endlessness of it, the feelings, the thoughts, Giving up to it all, surrender to it, knowing that it will never go away, but can only be embraced in the death of our resistance. And then there is life, naked and unadorned. 
and we meet ourselves in that moment and find joy in remembering who we were, united in the death of our resistance with the life that there is for us to enjoy. And you have to realize that it's never going to end. This sermon will never end. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to go on for another half an hour. Just, just, just about giving up so that you really get it, you know. I thought that was the best way to do it. This moment is never going to end. You know, this chapel, you know, the spiritual life, the home life, it's just all going to carry on. Your family life, the work, the struggles, you know, we are in it to the death. And do we resist it and keep going or do we turn around and surrender to it and have it be a joy rather than a trial? It's our choice to have it be a joy, to be behind it. Our choice is really when death comes. Our choice is when death comes. To have it be now and then live your life in freedom or put it off till tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and feel it creep in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. Dying only at our deaths. Let's pray. I have finished. We do pray for the struggling and striving that goes on in our world. The winning, desire to be first, desire to have won over, desire to keep going, the endlessness, the chaos. We pray for a sense of peace and love in the hearts of our leaders that they may enable us to have that joy of life. And we do pray for all those who do not have that joy of life. We pray for those in war zones, particularly in Syria at the moment. Pray those living under unjust regimes, those in prisons, is living at the effect of no justice. Pray for those who are homeless and hungry, afflicted, lonely. We pray that we may be able to share some of our bounty with those around us. And we pray for those who are suffering at the moment, particularly those who are ill in hospital, physically, mentally ill, suffering from the loss of loved ones. And pray for those in our own community, particularly pray for Rita Hunter suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease, for Heather Morrow suffering from a brain injury, and there is a GoFundMe for Heather Morrow at the moment. For Pat Smith with cancer, for Patricia Overton having foot surgery, for Brett McKenzie, and for the family of Connie May, very close to Michael Eisenhart, Um, who works with us here, who is dying at the moment. We just pray your Holy Spirit, Lord, goes to all those people. Your healing power, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. We're going to ask you to surrender your wallets now and (laughs) pass the plates around. And uh, we've got... um, Um, Ellen and Mark are going to come and uh, play some music uh, just to encourage you in that. Please do sing along on this. I haven't seen all there is to see, but I've seen quite a bit. I've seen things I'll always remember Some things I wish that I could forget I haven't quite been around the world But I've been around the block I know the distances are meaningless Like the hands that move around the clock And I know that love is everywhere 
always safe and always true and exactly where it comes from is where it's going to your heart to mine my heart to Talk about opening windows, talk about opening doors, my heart to yours, your heart to mine, love is a light that shines from heart to heart. and the lights they're like diamonds in the heavens enough to brighten the darkest of nights there's another side to sorrow yes there is to everything like the other side of lonely is falling in love again and then you know that there's an answer to the suffering and although it isn't easy, it's still as simple as you and me. And you know that love is everywhere, always safe and always true. And exactly where it comes from is where it's going to. Your heart to mine, my heart to yours. about opening windows, talk about opening doors, my heart to yours, your heart to mine, love is a light that shines from heart to heart. about opening doors, my heart to yours, your heart to mine, love is a life that shines from heart to heart. So I've got a little story for you. It's called the parable of the rope. We are like a person holding a piece of rope. He holds on for dear life, knowing that if he were to let go, he would fall to his death. His parents, his teachers and many others have told him that this is so. And when he looks around, he can see everyone else doing the same, holding on to that piece of rope. Nothing will induce him to let go. Along comes a wise person. She knows that holding on is unnecessary, that the security it offers is illusory and only holds you where you are. So she looks for a way to dispel his illusions and help him to be free. She talks of real security, of deeper joy, of true happiness, of peace of mind. She tells him that he can taste this if he will just release one finger from the rope. One finger, thinks the man. That's not too much to risk for a taste of bliss. So he agrees to take this first initiation. And he does taste greater joy, happiness and peace of mind but not enough to bring lasting fulfilment. Ever greater joy, happiness and peace could be yours, she tells him, if you will just release a second finger. This, he tells himself, is going to be more difficult. How can I do it? Will I be safe? Do I have the courage? He hesitates. Then, flexing his finger, feels how it would be just to let go a little bit more, and he takes the risk. He's relieved to find 
he doesn't fall. Instead, he discovers greater happiness and inner peace. But could more be possible? Trust me, she says. Have I failed you so far? I know your fears. I know what your mind is telling you, that this is crazy, that it goes against everything you've learnt. But please trust me. Look at me. Am I not free? I promise you, you'll be safe. And you'll know even greater happiness and contentment. Do I really want happiness and inner peace so much, she wonders, that I'm prepared to risk all that I hold dear? In principle, yes. But can I be sure that I'll be safe? What? You know, can I be sure that I will not fall? With a little coaching, he begins to look at his fears, to consider their basis, to explore what he doesn't really want. Slowly, he feels his fingers soften and relax. He knows he can do it. He knows he must do it. It's only a matter of time until he releases his grip. And as he does, an even greater sense of peace flows through him. He is now hanging by one finger. Reason tells him that he should be fallen. He should have fallen a finger or two ago, but he hasn't. Is there something wrong with holding on itself, he asks. Have I been wrong all the time? This one is up to you, she says. I can help no further. Just remember that all your fears are groundless. Trusting his inner voice, he gradually releases his last finger and nothing happens. He stays exactly where he is. Then he realises why. He's been standing on the ground all along. And as he looks at the ground, knowing he need never hold on again, he finds true peace of mind. All this joy All this sorrow All this promise All this pain And such is life Such is be such is spirit, such is love, city of joy, city of sorrow. City of promise, city of pain, such is life, such is being, such is spirit. is love and world of joy world of sorrow world of promise world of pain and such is life Such is be, such is spirit, such is love. All this joy, all this sorrow. pain 
And such is life. Such is being. Such is spirit. Such is love. Such is spirit. Such is love. And everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. So beautiful. So appreciate that. Absolutely wonderful. Mac and Ellen, everyone. So please do uh, join us downstairs. There's some yummies down there. There's tea and there's coffee. You can uh, work out how to put your card in the time capsule. You can sign up for the TV program. You can buy books, stuff like that. It's all downstairs. Uh, we're going to have a baptism at 11 o'clock up here. Margaret's been baptized. Is your family here? Margaret? Yes, over there. A round of applause for Margaret's family. Lovely to have you with us today. Absolutely great. That's going to be 11 o'clock. Please do join us if you'd like to. Uh, but in the meantime... May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.